Today, we're going to take a deep dive into this Creality Ender 3 V3. It's a 3D printer known for high-speed printing and it's nice metal construction, really nice construction, but I'm going to take a little different twist on this, right? I'm not going to talk to you about all the super detailed little specs and crazy things. I'm going to address you as the advanced beginner, right? You Maybe you already had a basic 3D printer. Maybe this is your first 3D printer. You don't want to go for a crazy thing, but you want a quality piece. So I'm going to talk to you about that in those kind of terms. And let's see if this is maybe the right one for you or maybe not. I want to jump right into it, but my style is... I look at all the comments and the questions online, other videos, that kind of stuff, and I want to talk to you about the three most common concerns I see, right? Because that's probably the three things you're thinking about. So number one is its complexity and is it right for a beginner? I'm going to roll the construction of me putting this together because it's so simple. I want you to see this while I talk to you about it. So this is absolutely super easy to put together. The instructions are great. The way it's organized is great. Very cool. Listen, 3D printers are a little technical, right? Like they're not just super plug and play. Now there are certain things that are plug and play, like as an example, this little scraper comes already pre-programmed into it. You just turn it on, press the scraper button and it prints it out. There are a couple other cool little things that it can print. Another one pre-programmed in there is the Benchy, right? This is the ultimate 3D printer standard test. Everybody prints it and then they kind of pick it apart to see how it was constructed and put together. And I will tell you, this looks great and it prints it so fast. Back to that beginner question real quick. So it, they are definitely a little difficult to deal with. They are, do not be scared, do not be nervous about it. If you're already looking into a 3D printer, trust me, you can handle this, but just be prepared. You're gonna have to go on the web, look up some questions. Things aren't always gonna print right, and you're gonna have to make some little adjustments as you go along, but trust me, you can handle it. This is very beginner friendly. The second most common question I hear is in terms of value, and is it right in the market and that kind of stuff, and it's definitely a little higher than some other models, but I think the amount of stuff that is built into this, see, that is me. I was gonna start saying a dual gear extruder and all that kind of, and I don't wanna to talk to you that way. The stuff that is built into this thing is really good, high quality. There's absolute value in it, and I think it's worth what's involved. Third and final concern that I see come up a lot is people have concerns about the variety of filament that you can use. Um, Actually, this was provided to me to do this review. And in their presentation to me, when they said, would you please test this out for the people? And that presentation included no instructions, just we're gonna send it to you, you try it out, tell them what you find. But we recommend you use our Hyper Series filament, which I did. I actually bought that for myself. I used it, I figured that would be a great launch point to start off and I used that, I had no issue. And then as I changed the different filaments and I went through a variety of different filaments, even right in their software, there are pre-programmed settings for most of the filaments that I had in my hands. So I would say I wouldn't be concerned about filaments. And I think if you're an advanced beginner looking at this, you're probably not all that wound up about very, very specific crazy filaments. So I personally wouldn't worry about the filament selection question. Actually, real quick while we're here, Here's like a basic blue that came with another generic printer that I had gotten to come with some sample things. Here's a cool silky like orange color that changes. I printed out this cool dragon with this, that you can't see it on the camera. It doesn't show and actually doesn't show so much in these lights, but during the day, this is such a vibrant black to blue transitioning color. And this all printed out super easy, no issues whatsoever. The silky ones, they're all, junky standard ones and their hybrid ones all did just fine. Would you please do me a favor? If this has been interesting, entertaining, helpful for you, please subscribe, give us a like, put a comment below. Like, are you planning to get something? What are you looking at? Do you have something already? Are you considering changing? Put it in the comments below, start a conversation, let's do that. Now there was one thing which I didn't see complained all that much about in the comments, I did see it in some reviews, and so I wanted to add that in here, even though it didn't add up in my tally. The feeder system, I have this, this just slides on here and the reel goes on here, is a little lame. Let me just show you this from behind so you could see. Oh, and here was my big reel test of their black, and it's, I love these things. It's a 
printed so many of those out. They all printed perfectly. But so the way this feeds is it feeds through here and then it goes up into this tube and obviously up and over. But the problem is, is when this comes down like that, the, it like backs up and spools all over here. Once in a while, it does get caught. They have this little adapter, which is supposed to put some tension on the reel so that that doesn't happen. Didn't really work that well. I only had one or two prints that actually failed because this all got tangled up here. I've seen more elegant ways to arrange this on the web and that kind of stuff. So if you're inclined and you're gonna get this and you're gonna tinker a little bit, there are absolute ways to improve this feed system, but this is easily the weakest point of it. And even at that, it's not that big of a deal, I didn't find. So let's talk about some of my positive takeaways that I really found unique and amazing about this. Oh man, blistering speed. This thing prints so fast, it's crazy. Part of the way it does that is it has this core XZ system, which controls it in both the X and Z axis using belts, right? Which is a little unique, not, not, they're not the only ones who do it, but it is pretty unique, especially at this range of things. And it is absolutely a phenomenal system and goes so fast when you're printing. It is, it is kind of fun. The other thing I will tell you as maybe a little bit of a, you should know is when it's printing that fast, it's pretty shaky. Like I actually had it initially, I thought I was gonna put it on kind of like a basic gaming computer table that, you know, nice metal construction, but not like, like something that's a brick like this. And that thing was like shaking pretty good. I was like, okay, we gotta move it to a more, more stable table. I printed on this thing here and it doesn't budge at all, but you need to know, um, I don't think you even need to know. You just need to be prepared to adjust. This thing like, you know, if it's not on something super stable, it's like, like I just, wow, was this thing shaking? But oh boy, was it going so fast. So it makes sense, you know, with everything moving so fast, it's gonna vibrate a lot. It's got nice rubberized feet, doesn't move anywhere. I had no issues with it whatsoever. I'm just telling you about it so you know what to expect. I'm not gonna get all wonky technical on you, but this Core XZ system and the dual gear extruder absolutely make a big difference in the performance and the performance is absolutely outstanding. Talk about one of the little simple ease of life thing is this nice big touch screen, super easy and nice to work with. And I do really love how it connects with their system. I printed everything over Wi-Fi with absolutely no issue. You could do it on your phone, you could do it on from the desktop. I actually much prefer working off the desktop, but on the phone, it gives you much more status of where your print is, which is kind of fine because I started printing on the computer and then if I'm downstairs two hours later, I look at my phone, I'm like, oh, it's 85% done, it's almost done. Overall, this Creality Ender 3 V3, wow, that is a mouthful. It took me a couple of days to get that out of my mouth, all in one concise thing. This piece of equipment is absolutely value-packed and great for the hobbyist maybe even like a light duty pro, that kind of thing. I think if you are a technical person, even if you're a beginner, you're still gonna absolutely love this. You can't go wrong with it. I think the speed is a really, really big positive and plus for this. I, you know, we discussed already, this is a little higher point in the marketplace than most of the beginner printers, but I think the construction and that speed brings so much value. You can do so much more, which is just more fun, more entertaining. You can iterate, make parts, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, this is definitely something that I would highly recommend for anybody who is that advanced beginner, hobbyist. I don't think I'd go with pro grade. If you're into pro grade, you're gonna be getting something a little different. First printer, fine. Not for like Junior, if he's looking at this for his first printer, unless Junior is in like AP science or something like that. But for somebody like me looking to get into this, I want my first printer, I want a quality piece, right? I care that it's gonna last a long time. It's gonna be super solid construction. This is definitely what I would recommend. Super cool. I'm gonna give it a full eight legs out of eight legs. I just love this thing. I've had so much fun with it. I've printed so much stuff. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. We'll see you next time.